Well, good morning, everyone. And, and uh, Claudia, I want to thank you so much for being here with us. Claudia, you're, you know, you're a Dutch designer and an artist. You create wonderful pieces of art. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, using wool, correctly. And um, this is uh, uh, sponsored and uh, allowed on behalf of also Materfad, who's a center for design and materials and applications here in Barcelona, Catalonia. I want to thank you so much for being here today. Um, I think it would be nice to maybe start with what's most obvious is the amazing artwork that you create. And I was shocked when I first saw this piece of art. It was, uh, it's, oh, it's so maximal and large and also the textures and colors that you're generating. Could you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. this work of art and its history or perhaps its meaning? Yeah, there was a, uh, a previous work, um, the same size. It, it was called uh, the Guernica de la Ideologia. Uh, was inspired by the work of Picasso, but then not about uh, the genocide, but about ecocide, uh, so destruction of, of land and nature. So I made the work in 2021 and uh, a tapestry traveling all over the world and uh, around this tapestry we have organized a lot of debates about you know uh, urgent topics not only about uh, climate uh, urgencies but also about um, yeah social uh, cohesion that we're losing that in our society and um, uh, since then since 2021 uh, I've been working a lot with farmers and trying to uh, to vitalize uh, agriculture in a contemporary way which means uh, when farmers have the possibility to grow, for example, alternative crops, crops for color, uh, for pigments, mm -hmm. then they diversify. Diversification means uh, you improve the soil and you have also another economic model. So it, in that sense, uh, we are trying uh, to work together with uh, farmers in the Netherlands, Germany, and now for the first time in Spain. So literally in this tapestry, uh, you can see the impact in a colorful way uh, of uh, these collaborations. And this work is called uh, tangible transformation, which means tangible tangibility. Uh, it's, it's about uh, sensory, it's about materials, it's about natural sources, uh, it's about haptic experiences. And the transformation is uh, literally a metaphor of how we work together with the farmers and starting with the soil. That's fascinating. I love that concept as well, the integration of different fields into yeah. like, and it's art is kind of yeah. the culmination. Yeah. Now the word like pastoral futures is, is an interesting yeah. title. Uh, it implies that perhaps, you know, the pastoral condition right now is in danger perhaps. And yeah. we know that you've been a long, lifelong like wool activist. Um, I, I, w I was wondering if you could kind of elaborate and you know, enrich my knowledge about what, what, what that all means. Why is wool in danger or what is the problem behind wool and the structure? Maybe even talk a little bit about the workshop that you will be conducting also in, in January. Is that correct? Yes, that's Here correct. in Catalonia and Val d'Aura, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it has been, uh, yeah, I think a, 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 tr a, tr a tragedy that wool has, has, <laughs> has been devaluated uh, the last uh, decades. I mean, 30 years ago in Spain, wool had the same economic price as cheese. Now we burn uh, on yearly base in Europe only 225 million kilos because we have lost our industries. We cannot make anything, we cannot produce. All the production uh, uh, inf uh, infrastructure has uh, outsourced towards uh, uh, Asia. And um, so w we noticed in, uh, in, uh, in, in times like the pandemic and the war, the wars, that um, yeah, infrastructure uh, changes immediately. And also, I mean, why would we waste a beautiful project, a product like wool uh, in this way? So uh, it's about, uh, yeah, also about consciousness, awareness, and uh, digesting wool, for example, in, in a contemporary tapestry, but also in furniture, in, uh, in insulation, wool has enormous qualities. And um, we visited many times, many, many farmers and shepherds uh, in Europe, and what we saw everywhere was the same um, 
uh, I, I would say the same experience that farmers had a really tough life. Uh, the next generation, uh, young farmers, it's um, yeah. I mean, it's not a very popular uh, profession. So how how yeah. Also in France, for example, the next generation farmers is not yet you know uh, uh, be seen, and making farm cool again, you have to um, uh, redefine farming for the future. And we believe a lot in uh, diversification also. So when we grew the crops, the, the, the pigments, the, the natural dyes uh, uh, with farmers together, we saw that the whole environment of the, of the farm and, and, and the farm life changed. Uh, designers came, scientists came, you know, people from the, f the food world came. So it was a very interesting um, uh, community uh, uh, and all related to, uh, to, the, uh, to the new crops. And uh, I think um, if this happens on many places and, and farming gets a new uh, articulation, you can literally change in a sense also the, uh, I mean, people can be challenged also to find new ways of, of pastoral life, so not uh, yeah, it's not about nostalgia, uh, nostalgia, but it's about contemporary innovations. And at Valdaura, I was there yesterday. I mean, they work in a, in a similar way. Uh, a lab, uh, it's very remote, but people have to be innovative, see what is there, you know, literally around. I mean, my uh, my my um, my eye was only on, you know, I saw literally the waste in the land uh, that can be uh, um, barks from trees laying there. I said immediately uh, to Vicente, you can use this for pigments. So that's why we're going to start on, on that place, uh, uh, seeing with the eye of, of a painter what can be used for color making. That's an interesting point. I always find it interesting how we have this idea of a dichotomy betwi between what we conceive technology of being mm -hmm. and ancestry, which yeah. is nothing but technology. Yeah, like, totally, totally. Yeah, the, the world. I've only most recently in the last years become more and more acquainted with uh, all these materials that are keratin-based and they have such amazing yeah. thermal insulation, uh, ability to absorb pigments. Now, um, I understand that all these pigments are ancestrally derived, correct? Using yes. chemistry that could be perhaps even replicated across the world yes. with plants that are known. Yes. I was wondering if you could go a little bit into that because that sounds so interesting. Yes, we, uh, we work uh, only with historical uh, dyes crops, but always related to the region, so no exotic uh, varieties. And uh, for this year, we started uh, growing in the Netherlands and in Spain similar crops, the same seeds, but uh, different, of course, soil and, and, and natural conditions. But the palette of the colors also are were different. So from Spain, we have more saturated colors coming from sunflower. You can see here the sunflowers from uh, from Navarra, and uh, the Dutch crops were very uh, yeah, they were greenish, not so vibrant in in in, in this in this golden glow. Um, there are many. Um, uh, differences in shades due to uh, natural conditions. As a terroir, you know, in, in winemaking, uh, it's always related to the place, to the conditions, to the people. And uh, yeah, what we saw also what was interesting, the, the social aspect of growing these, uh, these plants is when you harvest, a whole community is engaged in the, har in, the, in, the, in the moment of harvest. It was very joyful. People said it doesn't feel like working <laughs> and because it is transformed into something, you know, um, visible, it's analog, you can see it. And um, yeah, and it's related to every culture in the world has had or has these plant-based uh, uh, color palettes. But um, I mean, in, in the world, we, we are uh, united, the, the, the dyers, the natural dyers, in a sort of round table, and it's a handful of professional dyers. I mean, it's also, you know, yes. in time it will, I mean, that's part of our mission, yes. to educate and to transfer knowledge, because otherwise this you lose it. is gone. Yeah. yeah, this is happening in many cultures, yeah, across exactly. even traditional medicines and yeah. sh the shamanic traditions and the old rituals, yes, and, uh, and it's, such, it's such an origin for us. Yeah, totally. That it would be a really a, a, a catastrophe to, to lose yeah, totally. it. Now, yeah. I'm particularly interested, like in my field, um, we're always looking to the future, always mm -hmm. looking to new ways of using things, new applications. How do you see wool beyond art? Like, how do you see wool having an impact on perhaps other industries or other types of future economies, let's say? 
I think uh, um, learning from uh, you know ancient cultures and traditions, for example, in the northern part of Africa, there was in construction for, for buildings, uh, there was a combination of wool and clay, and it has an incredible quality for insulation. So I think if we learn from this, uh, yeah, uh, this, this type of architecture and, and uh, applicate this in the future, I mean, we can learn a lot from that. So I believe a lot in the, in, in the dialogue between ancestral knowledge and the contemporary uh, applications. Yeah, they always say there's nothing new under the sun, right? Exactly. So yeah. it's just how it's the point of view. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, can you see the pigment in the plant? Not yet, yeah. right? It's a process that you need to induce chemistry and have changes. Um, it's wonderful. I think uh, art is is that uh, luxury that we can never afford to lose, right? Because yeah. art is fundamental to them, to to humans and the, the way that they perceive beauty and color and texture. I, I'm just curious, just from a technical level. Maybe this is a secret. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to see. But I always felt it very interesting how you can, you can cause these different textures, like you can cause a shine versus a matte finish, and I was looking at the fibers, and could you, I was wondering if you could go into that, like is, that a, is there a technique that you use to? Yeah, the technique literally is, uh, I mean, it's like painting with fibers, and if we have, um, uh, in, uh, part of the process is uh, coming from, of course, the land and the harvesting, and then the coloring, and then we, we start with the, the carding of the wool uh -huh. that's that's uh, that's an essential part of uh, of the of the, yeah of the texture so um, uh, you can literally yeah uh, define the incredible uh, layering and depth so it's it's the people in my team who do this I mean they are like specialists and they're it's not it's not about there is no school for that right. it's in the work so uh, the pe people have been doing making these yeah. This, you have to have a very sensorial uh, skill, and um, it's refined, and you build up, and you 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 know a bit more to this shade or to that. So it's 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 a process. It's there is not a, an index um, uh, you can find on, on uh, online, but you have to experience skill building by doing. <laughs> yeah. Learning by doing, yeah, we're back at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Claudia, I want to thank you so much. Where can people find you and learn more about you? Yeah, uh, by of course uh, on my website claudiejongster.com, but also Instagram, um, and uh, we have a new uh, we just started a clothing collection. There are two pieces also in uh, in the exhibition. It's on the Lotes collection, completely full circle sustainable. So Lotes collection is uh, is the new uh, alternative direction. Fantastic, Claudia. Thank you so much for coming. Thank it was you. very nice to meet you. Thank you.